All right, so it's 11 o'clock. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen so we can get started here. Great. So, and it looks like a few more people have logged in. Thank you very much for coming to the class today. And uh, if you have any questions uh, throughout the course of the class, please feel free to use the question and answer um, or even the chat feature on your screen. I believe they're at the bottom of your screen. Um, either section would be fine. And uh, I will make sure to address those questions as I see them come in. Okay. And uh, other than that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So Lion Desk is a CRM. And I know you hear a lot of different abbreviations and acronyms and things. And so um, it is a customer relationship management uh, system. So a customer relationship manager, That's a, uh, excuse me, a, the CRM. So what it really does is it allows you to really coordinate your contacts and how you communicate with your contacts. You're able to keep everyone in one place, all of your contact information, no matter if you're emailing to someone, if you're texting back and forth, it's going to be one central database. And the reason I bring that up is because I think as a real estate agent, it's really important to realize that you are your own one person company, a company of one. And you wanna make sure that your information is well protected. And so having an independent system like Lion Desk is invaluable uh, because as things change throughout the course of your career, um, you will know that you have this one system in place uh, that is of course free by the way, as a member benefit, and uh, you won't have to ever worry about someone else getting that data. So we are gonna go into Line Desk and I'm gonna show you the page, but I love to start out over here just really quickly to um, give you an introduction to this page here, uh, excuse me, this tab here, education, and always come down to calendar to look for upcoming classes. Don't forget to come over here to MLS and then come down to Paragon Training Videos. I have a great number of videos on all topics, Paragon related. There are some homes. HomeSnap and other topics as well, uh, but go there for the training videos. They are a great, great resource. Uh, and uh, speaking of resources, uh, never forget that you have tech support available to you uh, 20, or excuse me, not 24 hours a day, excuse me, <laughs> seven days a week, <laughs> they are available to you. Uh, eight to eight Monday through Thursday, nine to eight on Friday and nine to five on Saturday and Sunday. So make sure to contact them with any questions that you have uh, as well. They are an amazing resource. So without any other further ado, I'm going to uh, first, uh, I'm gonna take us over to the website, liondesk.com. Now, this is something that uh, may be a little different than you're used to. Sometimes we will start here and we'll go ahead and click on to that login and then we'll log in and see our dashboard full of icons. And I'm sure you're familiar with this screen and you know, we'd go into here and that's I'm sure what most of you may have uh, done already and that's okay. Um, but just so you know, at this point in time, uh, the icon is not on this dashboard. Uh, we were going to have uh, it added and uh, officially launch yesterday, I believe it was. However, for a few certain reasons, um, there was a minor delay. Um, we should be getting it on our dashboard within the next week. Um, just before I click through, there is one new extra thing that is on your dashboard. You're seeing it right here on the page, just giving you stats about San Diego and how things are changing in the county. It's right here on your dashboard. But again, I come here just to show you that it uh, the link for Lion Desk is not yet here, but it should be here, I believe, within the next week um, from what I'm told. All right. So because the link is not here yet, at this point, I would love for you to open up a new tab or a new window. You can click on the plus sign, uh, you know, up here uh, and oops, excuse me. 
and open up a new window. But we want to get to liondesk.com, L-I-O-N-D-E-S-K.com. When you get to this site, it's going to look like this. And I want you to come up to the top right, well, I uh, will top right corner and just take a look at these couple of items. All right. So there's a sign up for free and there's your login. If you have never been to this site before, you're going to go through the sign up for free. And it is going to say and reference a 30 day trial. As I said, we're going to have a link that provides a special realtor account. And once that link is provided, anything that you start here should be transferred over into our new link. Um, and of course, it would not be a trial. It would just be the services that you're receiving as a member. Um, we're just coming here today so I can show you a preview of how to use uh, some of the features and what really to give you uh, an understanding of some of, of some of the features and what's available to you. Uh, but in reality, we're going to go over the basics today, simply getting you signed up, filling in the rest of your profile, and then we're going to uh, show you how to import contacts. Uh, I'll even show you how to send a mass email out. And um, I will show you a few, a little preview of a couple other great items that are available in LionDesk. Uh, but that's where we're going to stop. And I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but believe me, it is. <laughs> um, the wonderful thing about the system is that although it takes a little bit to get started, once you get everything set up, it is amazing. And it's customized to your likings and anything that you need. Uh, it's you're, you're going to see in just a moment. So for most of you, you're going to need to sign up initially, and that will be done by clicking on this button. Let's click on here. And it's really simple. Please fill in your first name, your last name, your email address, your phone number, create a password, make it something easy. I would say to make it uh, maybe the same as your MLS password or whatever your uh, something that you can remember. Of course, down here, the industry is going to be real estate and the role. Um, I think in most cases, I'm sorry, you have to choose real estate first uh, for you all will be agents, maybe brokers out there. Who knows? Maybe there are some uh, some transaction coordinators or uh, or anyone else. But go ahead and select the appropriate information. Click that you accept a user agreement. Feel free to read it if you like. I'm sure it's a thousand pages long, uh, but go ahead and click there and then click on sign up. And I want you and I'm going to give you a couple of, of minutes. Um, I'll give it until about 10 after. So once you go through this process and click on sign up, you're going to receive an email and uh, once you uh, to the address that you typed in over here. When you receive that email, you're going to need to tap or click on that link to confirm that you are indeed the owner of the address that was typed in. Once you do that, you are able to then go and log on. So again, I'm going to go over this quick process again uh, while, uh, while the rest of you uh, may be going to your email. I'm just going to give one quick second for that. But otherwise, I would encourage you to just follow along uh, with me and kind of see the process. Maybe take some good notes and go ahead and practice this after the class. This system also provides amazing customer service, and you're seeing like, me move uh, around that phone number right now. You can call that number. I called the other day and I got through really, really quickly. Uh, so I was actually pretty impressed with that. Uh, so anyway, they are really local in San Diego. So give them a call for assistance. And also on their uh, website, there are some great and really easy training videos. So um, take advantage of that. So as I was speaking there, I hope that's given anyone that wanted to fill this out and get to their email enough time. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and move on. So I've already confirmed my account. So let's say that, you know, I've uh, gone to my email, I've clicked on the link. And so now I am ready to officially log in for the first time. So I'm, let's just, we're going to go to our website 
we're going to get back here to liondesk.com. Now, of course, if you uh, went to your email on your computer that you're still sitting at and you clicked on your link, I would say just go right ahead and sign in from there. If you used your phone like I did, or in this instance, from what you're seeing, you would want to tap on the link on whichever device you'd like, and then open up a brand new window to get back to this screen, just like where we started. I'm going to click on login. And once you've logged in that first time, it will remember your credentials. Um, it's remembering my information in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on login. Just remember that if you are typing this in, your login information is your email address, not your six digit user ID. Lion Desk has been around for a little while now. It is uh, in the process of upgrading its system from version one to version two. So there are a few things you're going to see on the screen, uh, like this the beta version of the new uh, Lion Desk is now live. And, uh, but right now, what we're seeing is version one. We are going to click back and forth between the two uh, throughout this process. Um, and I will make sure to let you know what you are viewing and why we are switching back and forth uh, because I really do want to make sure that uh, you are understanding exactly what's happening. So overall, since we are going to a brand new version, we generally want to, um, at this point, take the time to click on this link here. Once the update goes through, again, this is you know, supposed to be um, at the beginning of next week, when you log in, it's just going to look like this. This is going to be the new dashboard, not the page that we saw previously. One of the advantages of this page, um, not only I think that I think it looks a little nicer and has more information, uh, but you can definitely customize the page and it even gives you the ability to click on this little arrow here. Mind you, if you'd like to have a little extra space, I think that's actually a, a really <laughs> nice option just to give you more space on the screen. Over time, you're going to have a lot of tasks here and recent events, and it's nice to be able to read everything out. So just remember that feature is always there for you if you wish to use it. So overall, this is the home page for LionDesk. And when it opens, you're going to see vitals. This is anything major that's changed recently. Now, we're not going to have anything that's changed recently because these are brand new accounts. Also, I am not personally an agent, so my screen will not be as detailed as yours, but I am still able to show you all the functions and how to get information in each set in each spot. So uh, after the vitals, you're going to see the tasks. Now tasks are more like a to-do list. You can set up your to-do list for anything. Uh, let's go ahead and just quickly click on create task so you can see how easy it is. You can decide what type of task this is. And just note right now, these options, you have these four. You can add other options and even remove some of these or you change what they are. In the description would be the subject line or you know what the task is, any notes you need to know, and then is it attached to any one of your contacts? Create your task and within a couple of seconds, you're gonna see this right here, this task created. It's really amazing uh, how you can use this system to remind you. And those reminders can be sent out in text or email or even by a phone call, an automated phone call uh, from Line Desk. Now here at the bottom of the home page, we're going to see the recent events. Recent events would be anything that has occurred in the system. This could be a text being sent. It could be an email. It could be that someone received an email and then they open it and you're able to tell right down here, it says that uh, John Smith received and opened his email at uh, 5.53 p.m. 
and you'll be able to know exactly what your clients are doing and how responsive they are, or even when to contact them again. Uh, if you see that your client has opened up an email and you haven't heard back, then maybe give them a call and follow up to say, hey, what did you think about these things that I sent you? And uh, you know, just to uh, make sure that they're really uh, seeing what you're sending. But and it, this recent event is going to show you the top, not the top 10, but the most recent 10 items. And you're seeing that here in the bottom left. Over time, you're going to have a lot more than 10. Uh, this was, again, a brand new account, just like you're going to have on your screen. So there will only be a few items here. Over time, if you wish to see more, you can click there and change to 50. So that is overall the homepage dashboard. And for good, and just so you can see and get used to what these sections are, I'm going to go ahead and leave that open on the left-hand side. So we've done probably the hardest part. Isn't that great? But what we are going to do now is go through a few extra settings. And now, although we are going through the settings, we're actually going to click on what says profile. The profile section is uh, what I consider to be the basic settings, quote unquote. The settings section, we're going to get into actually at the very end, believe it or not. Um, this is more of a section you go to that is a very advanced setting section. And so I'm going to uh, today primarily focus on the profile section with you. And then I'm going to give you a peek into here into how you can really customize the system. It's really actually spectacular um, how you can get that customized. So for now, let's go up and click on, well, your name, of course, it says mine on my screen, but you'll click on your name and let's click on profile. In just a moment, that page is gonna upload. Now, your page may look a little different. Some people may have these bars across the page. If that's closed, maybe it looks like this. That's okay either way. If your screen looks like this, just scroll down a little farther and you will see everything on your screen. It is totally okay. But so we can get the most on our screen at once, I'm going to go ahead and minimize. So over here in the main part of the page, you will see your name, your email address. Those things were just filled in a moment ago. If you wish to enter your website, yours will say the word empty. Click where it says empty, and you're gonna get a box just like that. Go ahead and type in your website. Uh, it can be your website, it can be your brokerage website. Maybe you wanna put in your Facebook page, uh, your LinkedIn, whatever you would like is perfectly fine. Go ahead and enter that. And then click on the check mark. you have the ability to change anything that you can click on. Note that here, I am, that with your phone number, I would recommend clicking on here to validate your phone number. That is gonna help uh, to let the system know it's okay to send text to you. You will see this other number here. Uh, and although there is a, that bar uh, or, you know, the, uh, that round symbol, obviously with the, the don't symbol or no symbol, um, you are able to actually change that phone number. Lion desk texting number, uh, you know, is here and again can be changed. The reason that it has to assign you a number is apparently um, uh, there's something legal related where a company, company X, Lion desk, can't send emails or send, can't send texts rather from your phone number because they don't own that number. So it's a technical issue. Um, if you really wanna go deeper into it, LionDesk can definitely talk to you about the true details, but overall, they're gonna assign you a number. If you wish, you can request a local number. Now, in fairness, that's, um, it, it, there is a charge for a local number. You can go to the Manage Subscription and Limits section, and uh, that's gonna be in uh, I believe that's going to be in our uh, in our settings, rather not over here on the left, uh, in the settings, and I can get you over to that at another at another time. But just so you know, that option is available to you. The number that 
is assigned to you, whether it be this or a local number, is dedicated just to you. And so if anyone were to send a text uh, or to respond to something that they receive, it would come to you inside of Lion Desk. The time zone, of course, that's going to be set for you automatically. Your texting times. It, this is just to say that the system, for whatever reason, it should never send text before a certain time. It shouldn't be sent after a certain time. The 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., this was just, this is my suggestion. What This is what I have in as my example. By no means am I saying that this is required. Um, it's going to actually be a blank space or empty on your screens with new accounts. Go ahead and click on where it says, uh, I believe, empty, and then you can update the time. This last section over here, or uh, this next section rather, send me my Lion Desk Daily Activity email. Um, I would say to do that, at least in the beginning, so you can see what's going on in Lion Desk in one place every day. Mind you, if you are going to use this, uh, you know, uh, every day religiously, you'll come into the homepage and you're going to see the data that you would be emailed. So it just depends. Maybe over time you may want to come here and change that, but I would say to leave it on for the time being. An introduction is a great way, of course, to introduce yourself. Maybe you have a saying, a slogan, a motto, a way of life, something that you want to share with your clients. Feel free to click on edit and type that in. Now, I know that big box comes up and it looks like it's kind of covering the box, but it's not actually. Um, you are able to click right there into the window and begin typing. And if you hit enter, you can go down and into the box. So you are able to go ahead and uh, type in there. Feel free to highlight and you know edit, change the color, uh, whatever you'd like to do would be great. Okay, um, if you have an introduction that you like to um, state about yourself. In the email signature, I would recommend you clicking on edit and then at least put in your name, your email address, your phone number, and your DRE. I'm not a real estate agent, but uh, so I don't have mine here, but uh, we could put DRE number and then uh, one, two, and, you know, and put the rest of your number in. Uh, I believe if you wish, you can put Cal DRE or C A D R E, um, whichever you prefer. I don't. Uh, I don't believe that there's a requirement for the C A or Cal, um, as long as you have at least a DRE number and your number there. Uh, but I would absolutely recommend that you include that and click on Save Signature. Remembering, and I'm just going to click Edit again. Remembering, you can customize this if you want to make it. You know, the font size a little bigger. Just remember to highlight. Go ahead over to size and then change the size. Or maybe that's still a little small, but then you don't want to go too large, uh, but you could <laughs> if you'd like. I wear glasses, so having a larger print is always helpful, I think. And the same with the font. You know, play around, have fun. Uh, at the same time, don't spend too much time. A lot of people aren't really looking at the signature so much. It's really something I think that you want to make sure to include so people can contact you more easily. Now, at the bottom of this page, oh, no, I'm sorry, let's go ahead and click on signature, uh, save signature, that's always important. The last thing on this page is where you're going to enter your return address. It says direct mail sender address. I want you just to imagine an envelope that you're sending out. And if you were to send a business, uh, a business message out, if you looked at the top left corner of that envelope, what address would you write in that top left corner? as your return address. That's what this section is. Please type in your return address. That would go there. And just make note that yes, the upgrade now is on this page. Um, it sh this should uh, go away. And uh, of course, we don't have just a trial. We're going to have this as a full member benefit. So the first section of the profile super simple and that's like i said very easy most of it has been filled in most of it was just our name we're going to get into the actual settings in a little bit in a little bit the next portion that we're going to talk about 
is really the meat and potatoes of a CRM. And it's getting your contacts or your customers, the C and CRM, <laughs> into LionDesk. In order to import contacts, you will need a CSV file. And again, remember, I know I told you there were lots of different initials and different things that we were going to talk about today and that just exist in the real estate industry. So a CSV file, it means it's a comma separated value file. Now, many people say, okay, well, that still doesn't help me. I remember it did nothing for me when people told me what that actually meant. I was like, okay, yeah, so what is that? Well, what that essentially is, is an Excel spreadsheet. An Excel spreadsheet that has a row across the top that has, a, in the first column, let's say it says first name. The second column at the top says last name. And if we look down those rows, we're going to see in the first column, we see a bunch of first names all the way down. In the last name, we see a bunch of last names. In the phone number column, we see a bunch of phone numbers and so on for each field. That's essentially a CSV file, okay? And if you have a CSV file that you have access to on your computer that you have saved already, that is wonderful. I would suggest that we use that one on the import process. Now, for most of you, you're not going to have a uh, you're not going to have one of these on your computer and ready to go. And I I definitely expected that, but that's okay. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to quickly export some information from Paragon. I know you all have Paragon accounts and I'm sure you have uh, a few contacts. Many of you have lots of contacts, um, but even the new people will have a few and it's okay if it's your information or a friend's information. Uh, I would just let them know they're gonna start getting some emails. I use myself and my best friend as the prime, uh, as my, uh, my starters and uh, just you know warned them said hey you know you're going to start getting some uh, some emails about homes because i need practice and <laughs> you're my friend so you're going to get and <laughs> get all these emails so uh you know let them know that you maybe you're gonna you're gonna send some things out so let's go over to paragon and i'm going to show you how to export some contacts so this way i can show you the next step and you can actually take those next steps here within lion desk so I'm going to click over here to my SD MLS dashboard. I'm going to click on to Paragon so I can get into that home page. And since it's close to the 4th of July, I put this theme on my page and I apologize. I'm zoomed in still large from a class I was teaching previously. I apologize. Your screen normally starts off like that. And of course, if you didn't notice, uh, sometimes that is small. You can click in your top right corner. Go ahead and, and zoom in. All right, quick little tip there. Anyway, so we're here in Paragon. I need to export my contacts. Now, you may have your contacts in Paragon. Maybe your contacts are in Google or Yahoo or AOL or MSN. And so I think I've named about five or six or however many so far. Well, there are probably, you know, 550,000 different companies that you can use um, to hold contacts. There are just so, so, so many. So I am going to explain to you the general process of how to export, okay? No matter where you start, if you are with Paragon, if you're with Yahoo, you're with, you're with company X, you're going to log into that system, just like I've logged in here. You're going to need to get to your contact section. In this system, we go to contacts and view manage contacts. Now in your source system, there may be a different process. In that case, you may want to call the technical support for the company that holds your contacts. Um, you know, if it's Outlook, call Outlook support. Uh, if it's Yahoo, call Yahoo support and so on uh, and ask them how to export. Another handy tip, um, believe it or not, is to simply Google the instructions. I uh, heard, 
I was helping someone the other day. They were using a program that I had never heard of before in my life. So I went to Google and I said how to export from this program. And I was lucky enough to find step-by-step -step instructions and actual pictures of what the screen would look like. So um, the tech support, tech support and of course Google is always there to help you. So in essence, we wanna go to wherever our contacts are stored, whatever program that may be. We're going to view them and we need to go through the export process. Again, in Paragon, once you come to view manage contacts, all you simply need to do is click on export here on this screen. And now just remember, this is not a, uh, something you have to do on a regular basis for LionDesk. I'm going through this process for those of you that do not have or do not already have a CSV file on your computer. So once you click on export, I'm going to confirm here that I want all contacts. And then when we select the file type, there's .vcf, it's a virtual card, or we have the comma separated values, the CSV. Well, that's the one we need. Let's click that option and click OK. Now that's going to begin the export process. And depending on the browser that you use, uh, you may either see a pop up over here or over here, or maybe at the bottom of the screen. If those of you um, are out there, you're still using um, Internet Explorer, uh, but you're going to see a pop up that asks you to save. You can save it with this name. You can change the name. Whatever you'd like to do is fine. And then you're going to go ahead and click save. But one thing I would say, no matter what you name it, is take note of where you are saving the file. You're going to need to locate it at some point in the future. Maybe you want to keep it on your desktop. Maybe you want to put it in your download folder. Maybe you want to download it to your people folder, whatever other folder you have. But either way, you just want to make sure you remember where you are saving the file and of course the file name. Click on save. And you're going to say, get your file saved. In Chrome, it does appear down here in the bottom. And I'm gonna click on it here simply to show uh, those of you, what, um, you know, that maybe are not familiar with CSV files really what it is. And this is what I was explaining, that along the top row in row one, you're going to see headings like title, first name, middle, last name, and so on. You'll see here Paragon has several <laughs> different uh, fields. Uh, think about 30 something different fields that can be filled in. Now, of course, I only have about four or five and that's okay. For those of you that are comfortable in this system, if you wish to erase the blank fields, go right ahead and do that to kind of clean things up but it's not necessary. So again, I wanted just to show you this CSV file and what it is. I exported my CSV file um, you know, from Paragon. Again, maybe you will use a different system. You may see different names across the top and that's okay. Whatever the top row is, um, that's going to be unique to your system, and you can make sure um, to keep them as they are. No need to change them or try to make them match to something that Lion Desk has. I'm going to go ahead and close this. And now we're finished with Paragon because we've already exported these, so I'm going to go ahead and click back up here and get back to the Lion Desk screen. So now remember, we are in need of importing new contacts. And just as a refresher, we got to this screen here by going up to our name, clicking on our name and clicking on profile. If you ever need to add new contacts at any time, you'll just simply click on your name come back to profile, and this page is gonna load for you very quickly. When it does, we'll go here to the top left corner. Import new contacts. Let's click on here. And now we're gonna see our steps here on the left. Step one, upload file. Well, that sounds easy. It says that we need a CSV file. 
wait a second, you know what? I think we just saved a CSV file. Let's go and locate it. We're going to click on Choose File to search through our computer for that file. Now again, remember, this is when it's really important to remember what you've named it and also where it was saved, because we're going to see the same box pop up. Now we saved it on the desktop, and mine was saved as contacts with a one in the parentheses. And so we can just scroll on down. Uh, that was the one there. And of course, that's why it's always nice to name it something that you'll remember. Uh, so when you're saving, keep that in mind as well. But you're going to choose the file. You'll confirm that the name is here in the file name box and click on open. See how we now see contacts1.csv. That's the name of the file that we just uploaded. This box is already checked, so there's no need to touch it. But I point this out because this is just confirming that the first row of the file that we entered has a description of the column. That means that it says first, middle, last. The only other step at this point would be, of course, let's go to step two. We finished step one. So let's continue to step two. Now the page is gonna load and we're gonna see three columns. We see a column that says your name field, lion desk field, sample data. So the your name field is that top row. That's why it's asking, do you have the headings in the top row? And we said yes. So it pulled the top row and put them here right here. It went to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth row, and it put the information here on this page, on this uh, column. Now notice that in the title section, there's no information. So there's no need to really address anything on this field. Let's continue down. And now I want you to see this first name that again, that was at the top of our Excel CSV file. The next items down were Shannon, Ian, Good, Andy, and then we see undefined. Well, I don't remember anyone named undefined. And that just simply means that the box was blank, that there was no information. So you will see undefined throughout the system and that's okay. What we wanna recognize is that we were in what we called the first name column. We have these things here, which at least to me appear to be first names. So what do we wanna call them inside of Lion Desk? Well, I would think we'd wanna call them first name. So let's click on here and choose, and look through the list rather, and then choose what we want to call it. Now I need to actually scroll down on the page so you can see the full list. Here we are. So here's the full list. So that looks like, they look like first names to me. Let's click first name. Let's go down, middle name, undefined. I don't see anything of value in this field, so do not import. Last name, these look like last names. Okay, I wanna import those into the last name field. And again, due to the zoom level, I need to scroll down to make sure that you see the entire page. There we are. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on last name to confirm that those are last names. Let's scroll through. I don't have any that contain a suffix, none that contain a company or a job title. So we can see undefined, no need to import anything because there's nothing in those fields. Let's scroll down, paying attention to this section to see the next time we find data. And let's see, undefined, undefined. This is uh, for those of you out there that are, again, are familiar with Excel, where it's helpful to remove some of these extra fields. At the same time, you can see how easy it is to just scroll down. So possibly this may be just the easier option. And look, here we see the next bit of, op uh, bit of information. I can tell that, that obviously is a phone number. We called it home phone. Let's choose something close in line desk. That would be, of course, home phone. Now let's go ahead down to this one and we have email address. We see email addresses. Let's say, yes, it is email. And then I see another email address. 
So email address two, let's look for that. And I don't see email address two, but there is secondary email that would work. Let's go ahead and click there. Now I know that I don't have any other fields, but I'm gonna show you, this is the way it works. You're gonna scroll down to the bottom. Now, in fairness, I, I, um, I have, to, uh, have to share with you that the next step is actually hidden, unfortunately. Um, we want to, now that we're at the bottom of the page, click on a button that says import all data so we can get started. Now, right now, Linus is having a little trouble, and I have a feeling that that's why um, our launch was, was a little delayed. The import button is actually in this general area underneath that black bar. And if you look really closely on your screen, you can see that there's import all data right here where I'm moving the mouse. And uh, I've reported this over to LionDesk, and I am awaiting a response um, as to them getting this page fixed. But I thought it important to show you the process of how to import your data and how easy it is to match up the fields. Okay, now that is the process. When I reported this issue, they gave me a very easy workaround. That workaround was to use their original version, version one. So remember before I said in the beginning that we would be switching back and forth a couple of times, and this is why. Uh, so if you wish to go through this process and you want to do it before the icon comes to the dashboard, the process is exactly the same. So no frets there. We just simply need to click on our friendly icon here. We're going to click on here to take me back to the old Lion Desk. And we're going to follow the exact same procedure. It's almost like this is a great little test to see if you remember what we did in the first portion of the class. <laughs> so, but luckily for you, I'm going to show you again. So we just simply need to go and find our name in the top right corner, just like we did before. We're going to click on profile again, just like we did before. When the page loads, we're going to come over to the left. And again, just like before, we're going to click on import new contacts. Um, you know, in order to import the new contacts. Oops, sorry, one second. I think I missed it. Oh, there we are. We'll wait for that to load. Again, we're going to click on choose file. Choose our appropriate file. Click on open. Continue to step two. And now that you know how this works, I'm going to go ahead and choose the first name for the first name. I'm going to choose last name for the last name. I'm going to continue scrolling down a little faster. Uh, sorry, I hope that is not dizzying. Um, and uh, I'm going to choose home phone for the phone. And then I'm going to come down and deal with the email addresses, naming them email and secondary email. Notice here now that we scroll to the bottom, we see import all data. I am hoping that uh, this issue will be fixed relatively soon, uh, but for the meantime, this would be the process you'd wanna go through in order to import your contacts, going back over to the left and into version one. Now you can click on import all data to complete that process. It's gonna tell you that the data is importing and it will be available shortly. Um, you're able to import up to 1,000 contacts at a time. If you have 1,000 that you are uploading, it's going to take a little longer. With the four or so that I've uploaded, it takes no time at all. Now, I would, um, you know, obviously recommend giving some extra time if you have a lot of them. When uh, you have more than 1,000, you will need to break up that list. So if you have one Excel list, here, here's Excel. If you have an Excel list, let's say that this one is actually on line 1000, okay? Or 1000, uh, you know, uh, so we're gonna come down here and we don't want anything after that. We would need to get rid of whatever other information. We're going to have to cut it from the page by using the control X, come over and put the rest of the data over here and create a new list. And then we can save this as 
contacts number two, and then contacts number three. And this is only necessary if you have more than a thousand. And if you need assistance with that, always give a call over the lion desk. They'll be more than happy to assist you. Um, that's just a little um, quick advanced option while, uh, while this was uh, doing its thing. I'm going to click on this X. Note that when you click on the X, you are still on this page. That is okay. There's nothing left for you to do. It's not going to refresh. It's not going to disappear. Um, it just tells you your data is being uploaded. Go to contacts to view, um, to view progress. Okay, so don't be alarmed at that, at that point. Now, before we go to contacts and before we switch, uh, you know, I want to go to the version two again. But before we go back to version two, I want to show you one other thing in the profile that's here. Let's click on our name and go to profile. Here we are able to upload a picture. And so if you have a picture on your computer, then this would be a the place that we can go to do that. And it looks like it's not clicking for me. So I apologize for that not working. We will have to skip. Oh, here we are. Uh, so we're going to come down here to upload photo. It's actually down on this in this section. So if you're on this page still, we're going to scroll straight down. Come to choose files. And then again, the hardest part ever is finding those pictures. I recommend leaving them on your desktop or maybe putting them in a picture folder. I know I have got a picture of me over here. I'm going to go ahead and click on that to open it. And it looks like I don't see it here. Let's try that one more time. Let's click on that to choose. Let's click open. And it appears that that's not coming in. So we, but that is the process. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that issue reported. Uh, possibly my picture is larger than three megabytes. Uh, but this is the only other option I would recommend doing in in a version uh, in the version one. Now that contacts are uploaded, I want to go ahead and get back over to the new version so I can show you how things go. Here we are. Let's go over here to the left and I want to click on contacts. In a moment, you are going to see my contacts here on the page. Now, when you first look, you're seeing, wait a second, doesn't, isn't that your name over and over and over again? Yes, it is. I'm the owner of these contacts. Um, there are portions of the system that can be um, partitioned out if you work with other people or on a team. So you can actually assign it to your partner or to a transaction coordinator, who, whomever. Um, but for the most part, you all are going to just see your name here in the first column. The hotness level is how likely they are to buy or sell, depending upon what type of client they are. That can be determined inside of the individual contact information. Let's click here on my, let's click here on my name here on this contact. And we're going to see my name pop up and, and that's, you know, really it. Uh, we can click on contact information to see more, personal information to see more, and notice this hotness. If you click on it, we can say that hot, warm, or cold. Maybe you want to have, um, you know, really um, likely, not likely, and never going to buy. <laughs> uh, maybe you want that in your list. You can actually customize those options if you wish. You don't have to have hot, warm, and cold. You can customize that. But come through, and remember, you can always add information simply by clicking on the add symbol in each section. It's very simple. Just click on what you want to add. You can even add a custom field. If there is a field that is not included, which and there are lots of them, 
But if for whatever reason, there is field X that you want to include because you have certain information that you want to put on your client, absolutely, you go right ahead and include that. Custom field name and type it in there. And the type of data um, can be selected. If it's a dollar amount of date, a number or text, you want to choose that as well. But the field can be called anything. And remember, that's a field that will be added up here. If maybe if you want a spouse alternate phone number or something like that. We'll continue down. The event timeline, this is anything going on with this particular contact. Any tasks that are included with this contact. And then any campaigns attached to the contact. Now, a, con a campaign, you may have seen that name over here is reminiscent of the automated, uh, the automated uh, system that you use in Paragon. It's essentially pre-programmed emails or texts or even calls that you can put into the system and say that, okay, on day one, I wanna send my prospective customer this email introducing myself and all of my services. And then on day two, I wanna send a text that says, hey, I hope you got my email and I'm really looking forward to working with you. And then maybe on day seven, you send an email that says, um, I'm really excited about uh, showing you some homes. Let's set up a time for the coming weekend. And then maybe another email to remind about something else. And so you can decide how you want these to go out and how many days apart, create a campaign or an automated drip system and uh, ha just have it pre-programmed. Best part of it is, is that if you go through the same process with multiple clients, you only have to write these emails out one time. And then you can just consistently say, oh, I've got a brand new client. I need to send them this. I need to then text them. I need to do that. Rather than you actually doing all of that work over and over and over and over and over again, you actually just do it once really, really well in your campaign list. And then you essentially are copying and pasting all of your data from that point forward into the future. So it really is a spectacular section. You are able to send videos and text, uh, videos through text and email. Uh, visual, the market insights, uh, this section is actually uh, going to be actually coming soon uh, once we are attached to the MLS and as far and transactions as well. Uh, you are going to see any transactions that are associated uh, to you uh, from the MLS. And so this is going to be a great option that's available to you as well. So just remember that all of these other things are here and available for you in Lion Desk. There will be more advanced training coming, you know, you know, in the future. However, at this point in time, I would definitely recommend reaching out to Lion Desk support. Uh, and uh, before the end, I will make sure to show you that online help and the other support uh, and the support number. But before we finish up, I wanna click back into contacts again and show you one last thing. From your contacts, we can scroll, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to click there. We can click on your bar and scroll over and you can see the other information about each person, whether or not there's a phone number, the status, if there's a tag, a tag is a way of sorting your contacts. Over time, you may have maybe a thousand or two thousand contacts. You don't want to have everyone on the page at the same time. That can be confusing. You may want to come into a particular contact and tag them. Maybe they are a buyer. and go ahead and save it. And now I'm gonna go back to my, my list. So again, you can go through and assign whatever tag, whether it be buyer, seller, um, you know, friend, uh, neighbor, and that should be 
yeah, there we go, tag. It is, it is in here, all right. It just didn't appear on the other page. Let's go back. So that tag should be here in the list at this point. I'm not sure why that did not reappear, um, but that may be something that I need to call upon as well. However, my point being is that in the contact section, you know, having those tags is very useful because when you want to, uh, when you want to only see a certain group of people, you can use your filter uh, here and really filter out, uh, uh, you can filter out by tag. Oh, there we go. Now it's come back up. We can filter out by the tags. Uh, we can filter by anything that we want. We'll go to tags here. And so we only want to see tags that include buyer. And then there we go. Now we only see one person in the list. That's great. And we can, or of course, because we only have one person marked, but if there were 50 people that we had listed as buyers in whatever area, uh, we could select it, select all of them, and then email or text to all of those people. And the tags are definitely essential. So when you're creating your contacts, um, definitely go through and make your tags uh, really the best way to um, make it easy for you to get through them all. Um, if you were to have to come to your contacts and scroll through a thousand different contacts every day and then decide individually, okay, yes, I wanna to send to that person, no, not there, yes to this one, no to that one, okay, yes to this one, that would be really, really troublesome and time consuming. So having the ability to um, use tags will really save you a lot of time. Um, again, that's just a little extra pointer. I know that wasn't really a basic um, portion of the training, uh, but I really think that it's so important because um, when you're importing your contacts, if you have so many of them and they're not tagged, you will have a really hard time uh, finding and working with the people that you, that you want to work with and communicating directly with them really, really quickly. So I think that's really, really important to go through and make sure that each person does have an appropriate tag. Uh, so uh, that's about all I need. I'm going to go over with, um, you know, with you today. I really appreciate all of you coming. Um, the uh, actually no one last thing I did tell a little fib. I did promise you I was going to show you the online help section and I take you in here because there are some great training videos. When we click on here, we get here to the, the line desk training video page. When you scroll down, best of all, one minute videos. Actually, they're about a minute and a half, <laughs> to be honest, I, 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 as I look through. But uh, really short videos on how to complete your profile. This section is essentially what we talked about already. How to upload your contacts. Again, what we talked about, but if you are doing it again uh, later on by yourself with another CSV file, this is a great little refresher that you can watch to make sure that you feel comfortable with that process. Again, sending a bulk email, as I showed you before. Um, this will show you how you can sort and then select all of your the contacts in order to send to all of them at once. And you can continue down farther into the more in-depth videos as well. Remembering that you can always contact their technical support. The number is at the very bottom of the page. That's why I'm scrolling. I promise it's not to make you dizzy. Uh, all the way down here is their phone number. Give them a call Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. They're able to assist you. I would say to give this number a call um, first, primarily if you have any questions on uh, on uh, online desk, um, any more than what we went over today, um, as opposed to regular um, tech support, um, you know they would also they would be available to help you go over the um, the the minor things uh, and the setup that we did today. Um, but for anything detailed, I would definitely give this number a call. So again, I thank all of you for coming today. I really do appreciate this. And I hope that you found some value in what you learned and also in LionDesk.
I am very excited to have this on as a member benefit in order to you know use it for myself, especially because it is so customizable. And um, we have a one minute left and I'll show you just really quickly here. If we click in here on their name and go into settings, this is really the more advanced, but I just want to show you really quickly for the few people that are still on what we what is really available. So remember before I said under the in each contact, we can say were they hot, were they warm, were they cold? But I said, well, you don't have to call them hot, warm, or cold. You could call them, yeah, really good, really gonna buy, not gonna buy, you know, whatever, just kind of you know trying to be funny, but at the same time, you really could. You can click on edit if you wish and go ahead and just change that and just say not interested and maybe you don't like blue maybe the not interested is going to be red because you say no red means nope i'm not going to call not doing it at all so that says not interested and then maybe you make your um really interested and maybe you make that green because it's like green it's a go um whatever makes more sense for you you can customize it and have it be exactly what you want just like when you create a task I asked you before, do you want to do one of these four tasks? And maybe you don't, maybe you want to do door knocking or you're going to, um, well, whatever. I know you do lots of things as real estate agents. <laughs> I have a different job, but whatever it is, all the many things that you do, you can have a different category for each of them. So um, as I mentioned, you know, door knocking, uh, you know, if you're going through your farm, you could put a new category in and call that door knocking so you can remind yourself to do door knocking in the morning and we'll leave it brown since maybe the doors are brown <laughs> knocking on knocking on wood uh and maybe it'll bring you some good luck too so you can really truly customize this system as i said here are the tags that i created for the type of buyer even the type of contact all of this is here for you um, and customizable and maybe you don't work with inspectors, so you're like, well, I don't need that. <laughs> okay, I'll click remove. And now that is not even on your screen, so you don't ever have to see it again. Again, why, one of the reasons why I like this is because it is so, so fully customizable. Um, so again, all right, I've only gone a minute over. I think that's like a record for me that I've only ever gone over just a minute. Um, I'm going to stop now <laughs> and without giving you any more information or trying to get you too confused with extra information. Again, I really, really appreciate you coming to the class today. I hope you can take something home away, uh, you know, away from this class. Please give a call in to tech support if you need assistance. And otherwise, um, please check the education calendar uh, for upcoming classes here on star.com. And I will see you soon, either in person or at your next webinar. I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful holiday and a great weekend.